Hi guys, welcome back to another The Shiver review and welcome back to the second virtual top trump. Today I will be comparing two GT cars which are the Ferrari 812 Superfast and the Aston Martin DBS Superleggera. And guys, also, I've got some fantastic news to share with you all. I am teaming up with Love Cars, and make sure you check out their YouTube channel, it's called Love Cars, and don't forget to subscribe to their channel. I am going to talk about the pros and cons for the Ferrari 812 Superfast. So the pros are it engine, it's astonishing attention to detail, it gives up nothing to a mid-engine supercar on the handling agility. The cons are its chassis is far from ideal for everyday use, its limited tyre longevity, its price is not good as a GT car as it could be. So now I am going to hand it over to Paul Woodman, he is going to show you some interesting facts about the Ferrari 812 Superfast. In fact the whole body has been designed to sculpt and manage the flow of air all the way across the car and you can really see that from the outside. You can almost follow the flow of air across the body without it even turning a wheel. And the end result is a car that cuts through the air and stays glued to the road all in the name of performance. Now also I am going to talk about the pros and cons for the Aston Martin DBS Superleggera. So the pros for the Aston Martin are its mighty drive train, its composed and deeply satisfying to see, uh, its jaw-dropping look. Now the cons are its cabin design and layout needs work similar to the DB11 and it needs a lot of road space and it has certain driving dynamic behaviors. So now I am going to hand it over to Matt Watson so he's going to show you some more interesting facts about the Aston Martin DBS Superleggera. You may think the DBS looks familiar, well that's because it's based on the DB11. However, that car is designed as a Grand Tourer. This is a Super Grand Tourer. Now that doesn't mean that it wears a cape and solves crime. It means that the performance is super and that's thanks to some key upgrades which I'll just run through now. The 5.2 litre V12 twin turbo produces 725 horsepower, which is 150 more horsepower than it produces in the DB11. It also has 900 newton metres of torque. Now that performance upgrade hasn't come from any mechanical changes. All they've done is reflash the ECU. The engine was always capable of that performance. They just turned it down in the cheaper car. The DBS is fitted with an uprated and strengthened eight-speed flappy paddle gearbox to cope with its engine's added performance. That said, the engine's torque is still limited in first and second gear to stop the gearbox from exploding. For added stopping power and reduced weight, you get carbon ceramic brakes as standard, and they're 360 millimeters on the rear and a whopping 410 millimeters here at the front. The adaptive suspension is stiffer and it sits the car 5mm lower to the ground than the DB11. Also you've got a different wheel geometry setup so the car is just a bit more pointy and agile. And then there's the rear limited slip differential which is just more aggressive for improved corner exiting traction. Pirelli has created some special bespoke high performance tyres for this car and they're wider than those on the DB11. For instance at the back they're 305mm wide. The DBS also has a range of aerodynamic features added to it over the normal DB11. 
These improve the flow of air over the car, as I'll explain now. First, it's divided by this huge front splitter, so the air goes underneath the car, and it's actually channeled through Venturi tunnels like you have on a Formula One car. Also, some of the air goes into through these ducts here. It then exits in front of the front wheels, goes over the outside of them, back inside the wheel arch, and then comes out of these side strakes. Now, as the air moves down the side of the car, it is then split by these wings which the door mirrors sit on and that helps direct it into these huge vents you've actually got just by the rear windows. Now then the air travels inside the bodywork and then it finally exits here through these vents which are just behind the rear spoiler and that kicks the air right up high here. Now the air that's gone underneath the car is then divided by the dual rear diffuser. Once again, that's like you've got on a Formula One car. Then the air meets up somewhere up here. What that does is actually create downforce. And at its top speed, this car produces 180 kilos of downforce. Now the DB11 on which it's based, actually at its top speed, has 20 kilograms of lift. Now the interesting thing is that Aston Martin has managed to create that downforce without increasing this car's drag over the DB11. This car is called the Super Leggera, which is Italian for super light. To tell you the truth, that name, well, it's a little bit of a lie. You see, this car still weighs 1,800 kilos. However, it is 70 kilos lighter than the DBS. And to put that into context, I weigh around 70 kilos. Now, the way they kept the weight down is to use carbon fiber for lots of different parts. So you've got a carbon fiber bonnet, you've got a carbon fiber roof, there's a carbon fiber boot lid, and all the added aero, that's carbon fiber too. All these upgrades come at a price though. The DBS starts from £225,000. That's around £60,000 more than the DB11. And for that, you'd hope it stands out. Thankfully, it's really easy for everyone, even non-car experts, to spot this is the more expensive car. I mean, there's already that aero that I've talked about, such as that huge rear diffuser. The DBS also gets a fixed rear wing. On the DB11, it's hidden and it pops up mechanically. Also on this DBS, you've got a full length light bar, which runs the width of the car. You don't have that on the DB11, but by fitting that, it means there's no room for the traditional winged Aston Martin badge. So they've just written the Aston Martin in bigger letters, and why not? Now, as you move down the side of the car, you have 21 inch forged alloy wheels as standard. The DBS also gets a wider track, makes it all more muscular and meaner, it sits low to the ground. You've got these larger and deeper side skirts. There's DBS badging, there's those side strokes there, which are really aggressive. On the DB11, they're just slat. Now, <laughs> here in the bottom, there's some huge air vents there to help cool the engine and let it breathe. Then as you move around the front, there's the splitter here and an absolutely massive gaping grill. I mean, look at the size of that. It's, it's huge. It looks like it's going to gobble up the road. So now, guys, what you have all been waiting for, the driving experience on this beautiful icon. Over to you, Matt. Right, and let's talk about the driving experience. And it is dominated by the bonkers engine. Now, there's loads of cool stats about it, but I can't remember them. So I'm going to quickly refer you to a man from Aston Martin. So zero to 60 in 3.3 seconds, zero to 100 miles per hour in 6.4 seconds. Fourth gear, 50 to 100 miles per hour is 4.2 seconds, which by the way is a second faster than the 812 super fast. Top speed of 211 miles per hour, which is the fastest road go in Aston to date. Really for me, the thing about this engine is the insane pulling power. So I'm in fourth gear. I'm just under 2000 RPM. I'm just gonna put my foot down. And it's gonna come on boost. And now, <laughs> the way it pulls in fourth gear, it's like most of the performance cars in second. Oh! Thankfully, as well as insane performance, this car has insanely strong brakes. Now, they do feel a little bit grabby when you first press them. So, yeah, you just touch them and it's like, oh, good. Ooh. And that can, at first, when you're not used to them, make you feel a little bit sick as you jerk to a stop. But when you're heading through the mountains and you're using them a lot, because they're common ceramic, they don't overheat. So they're always there to pull you up, which is good. Then there's the handling. You can chuck it about a bit if you want to. The only thing that you've got to watch though, obviously, is when you put your foot down. Yes, there is decent amount of grip. <laughs> like that then. You're going to want to keep your stability control on because if you put your foot down too eagerly, it'll want to go sideways. 
Now, as bad luck would have it, I appear to have driven into a cloud. And <laughs> it's starting to rain, and the road's very wet and slippery, so yeah, with all that power going through just the rear wheels, I'm not gonna push this car, but this gives me the opportunity to talk about what this car's like just to cruise around in. So I'm gonna press this button on the steering wheel to put the suspension into its softest setting, and press this one over the other side to put the engine into its more relaxed setting, and it also quiets the exhaust note as well. And then I'm gonna put the car into drive and see what it's like just for touring. Yeah, it's reasonably comfortable. The gearbox is smooth. Yeah, if I put my foot down, it responds. Oh, <laughs> the car does wiggle with this wet road. Hmm. Yeah, I could quite easily do a lot of miles in this. It's fine. Ah, oh, this looks a little bit like a swimming pool. I think I'll just pull over and wait for the rain to stop. Wow, that was breathtaking. That car is surely a strong contender, but now let's check out the super fast. Over to you, Paul. And get your full attention, it does. Oh, it's a car that I just don't think I could ever get bored of driving. And I mean, just listen to this. What a noise. And of course, it all starts with that incredible V12. Probably, and sadly, the last time we're ever going to see a naturally aspirated V12 in any sort of Ferrari ever again. It's an absolute masterclass. If you wrote a, a list of all the things you wanted in an engine, I guarantee this will tick every single box. Imagine you want an abundance of power available at any time. 800 horsepower, no problems there. You want an engine that looks good in the engine bay. Well and truly taken care of. And you want a spine tingling howl every single time you put your foot down. Present and correct. It comes from a long line of front engine, naturally aspirated V12 Ferraris. Before this was the F12 Berlinetta, then you had the 599 GTV, 575, 550 Maranello, and so on and so forth. But Ferrari have actually been building V12s from the day they started, so it's unsurprising that they're pretty good at building them. But this six and a half litre, naturally aspirated engine will go down in history as one of the all time greats. And I know that hybrid and fully electric powertrains are the future, indeed they're the present now, but hats off to Ferrari for holding out as long as they possibly can by giving us this red-blooded, red-headed, naturally aspirated V12. An engine is nothing without a gearbox, and the seven-speed dual clutch in the 812 is as impressive as the V12 it's paired to. The changes, they're instant, they're so lightning quick you can change down three gears in the space of one second this <laughs> so between these gear shifts and the 800 horsepower being dished out by the engine the whole thing turns into an absolute flying machine it is utterly rapid i'm driving in sport mode i think it's a nice mode to drive in and it's amazing how much traction you get considering all of this 800 horsepower is going to those massive rear wheels at the back. In fact, putting the 800 horsepower aside, the Superfast isn't a particularly imposing car to drive. It's easy to place in corners and you don't feel like you need to wrestle it down the road. It actually manages to make its crazy performance accessible to mere mortals. And much of this exploitability is down to its clever tech. And there's lots of it. The Superfast comes as standard with rear wheel steering which essentially cheats the physical dimensions of the car and makes it feel like you've got a shorter wheelbase car by turning the rear wheels as you turn into a corner. It'll even help you out if it detects the car starting to understeer by adding lock on the rear wheels to help you recover. And I didn't know, but this is apparently the first Ferrari ever to be fitted with electronic power steering. And 10 years ago, that might have left you feeling a bit vague and unnatural thinking you've got no feel in the steering wheel, but Ferrari have obviously done their homework because it doesn't take anything away from the driving experience at all. The car uses a combination of active and passive aero with ducts and flaps that move to maximize on the downforce at slower speeds and then help reduce drag at higher speeds. Essentially, it's a little bit like a DRS drag reduction system that you find on a Formula One car. 
and this obsession with performance isn't surprising when you remember where Ferrari came from. The world of motorsport was a birthplace of the prancing horse and racing was always Enzo Ferrari's true passion. To borrow words from a certain Christopher Nolan movie, some manufacturers merely adopted motorsport. Ferrari was born into it. It's woven into the very makeup of the company. And however the results are at the moment, there's absolutely no denying that Ferrari will continue to be one of the most iconic and most successful teams of motorsport in history. You know what's special about all of this technology, all of this cutting edge automotive engineering and driver assistance is, it doesn't get in the way at all. For the last few decades, cars have grown cleverer and even more capable but most have also started to lose a little bit of their raw charm. 0 to 62 times of drop, power figures have risen, but driving sensation doesn't really have a figure that you can refer to. And for many modern cars, they just lack that raw excitement. And let's be fair, why else would you buy one of these cars? Why would these cars exist if it wasn't to excite people behind the wheel? And I think that's the real strength of the Superfast, the fact that it manages to provide the benefits of modern automotive technology without compromising on the end experience. Thanks to everyone who voted, this was a real close one. The winner is the Ferrari and I strongly agree with you all on this because one key point to remember is unfortunately it's the last week well, naturally accelerated in the making. Thank you guys for watching and also next week we will be reviewing some more amazing cars. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel, it's called The Shiver Review. And also follow me on Instagram, it's called TSR UK.